Everyone knows how hard it is to break into tech, but there are some unconventional ways to still do so. In this video, I will talk about how I got into software development and it's not 100% a normal conventional story. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So to get a little backstory about like how I got into tech, I grew up in a small town and the Android, which was like the droid with the little like keyboard, and the iPhone were kind of becoming a big deal. And I was really getting into like how cell phones and software development were being used together in that situation. So I kind of thought maybe I would have been a mobile developer back in uh, like middle school and high school, but totally not the trajectory <laughs> later on and how I became a software engineer right now. So my whole life was just focused on basketball. So I was always good in a team setting and I loved like taking control and being kind of like a solo contributor in a broader team. Kind of like how basketball works. So I played basketball my whole career. And when I graduated high school, I went into college also playing basketball and I went in as pre-med. So I started off in pre-med and the whole time I was in pre-med, I always knew I had a love for software. So I always tried to create um, ways to make pre-med easier using software. However, when I tried to do that, I failed miserably. I couldn't create anything. I was trying to learn how to program and I remember just being stuck literally on everything. The first thing I tried to get into, iOS programming. It was before Swift. What was that? Like Objective-C? I started off in like Objective-C trying to create an iPhone app because at the time I had like the iPhone 4 or whatever it was. And I could not wrap my head around programming at all. At the same time, I thought my grades in pre-med were not doing as good as I wanted them to be if I wanted to get it accepted into med school, everything else that follows that. So me and my buddy were chatting about different paths because he was also in pre-med and we're like, maybe this isn't for us. I knew I'd love technology. He kind of liked technology. He was more like a math focused guy. So we decided to jump into computer science. So we jumped into computer science. We took like uh, early Java classes and guys, I did not know how to program at all. I somehow passed with a computer science degree through college, not really knowing how to program. And that's because computer science degrees aren't really teaching you step-by-step -step on how to program. They kind of go a little bit more broad. They teach about hardware, networking, all different areas of tech. So when I graduated, I really did not know how to program. So when I I was like a junior, people kept telling me, you have to get an internship, you have to get an internship, you have to be able to do leak code and all this different stuff. And I did, I could not solve a leak code at all. I barely knew how to run my own, you know, college projects, let alone solve data structures and algorithms. So what I ended up doing was I applied to different tech jobs that maybe was a little easier to get into than software development. So I ended up getting a internship as a business analyst. So a business analyst is kind of the liaison between uh, the tech world and the business world. And I was the guy in the middle. So if the business team needed some directions or needed some like new features or, you know, they weren't able to use the product correctly, I would write requirements and I would send that over to the tech team to be like, hey, this is the issues the business team is struggling with. We need to make these adjustments so to make the business happy. And luckily, as a business analyst, I was sitting with the tech team, not the business team. So I was able to really get a deeper understanding of how software worked on a larger scale. So I ended up doing that internship for three months during the entire summer and was offered a full-time job with the only requirement of me graduating the next year. So they said, hey, Eric, here's a job offer. It is valid for 365 days, the only requirement is that you graduate college. So I went into senior year not even caring how to program. I was fully on board that I am going to be a business analyst and I'm going to be on the business side of technology. So I ended up graduating, going into uh, the business analyst job. I ended up accepting it. And now I work at this large enterprise and I am sitting with the tech team doing the business analyst stuff. During that, one of my managers at the time said, hey, you need to learn SQL because if there's a business issue, instead of just going straight to the tech team and the developers, we'd rather you be able to look up maybe data, see if there's any kind of data issues that might be causing whatever issue or bug that the business team might be experiencing. So I ended up 
up diving into SQL. It was using a DB2 table, so I think it's like IBM SQL, and I was really diving in, trying to learn as much about SQL as I possibly could. Now, my SQL skills were definitely not great. They still are not fantastic by any means, but I was able to slowly kind of get into SQL that way. Well, later on, fast forward like a year, so now I'm doing business analysts for like a year. My manager came up and said, hey, Eric, we need more software developers. At the time, we had a small software uh, engineering group, and then we outsourced and contract a bunch of software developers from there. And they came up to me and said, hey, we want to grow our internal software group and asked me if I wanted to slowly start learning software development. And how they broke it up was I was going to start off as six hours a day working as a business analyst. And the next two hours a day, I would be working with our internal software team on becoming a software developer. So I was essentially getting paid to learn how to become a software developer. And at that time, I was learning Java, Spring Boot. I was already knowing a little bit about SQL. So now it's just about the ORM that connected the application to the database. So I was really in that world and my hours slowly started shifting from business analyst to software developer. And I remember that shift happening and I was like, oh crap, I'm becoming a software developer. Like I started getting assigned a ticket one day and then I started getting assigned two tickets and they started saying, hey, Eric, do you have any more free time? Um, I know business analysts might be a little slow right now. Do you mind working on this software bug or software feature? I was assigned a mentor. It was the best opportunity I think I could have got as an individual who loved tech, wanted to get into the software world, but never thought I was smart enough. So once I started that transition, I still didn't really know on a global scale or like a large scale how software works, right? I was only doing it from a very small task here and there. I'm not dedicating eight hours a day to it point of view. And that's when I started just going home and practicing every single day. At this time, I was uh, completely single, no kids, would go home and no joke, I was starting to try and create a different startup, probably like weekly. At this time, I think I'm using Angular as my front end language. So I'm using Angular, Spring Boot, connected to a MySQL database. And every single day I'm trying to get better. And I would take this project that I'm working on at home, take it to work and show my mentor, hey, this is what I'm building at home. Do you have any advice on how I can make this better? And he would say, oh, you probably could do this. You probably could do that. I'd like, oh, should I switch from Angular to React? And he'd be like, no, they essentially do the same thing. But if you want to, you can kind of go down that hill and start learning that. I started then jumping into Django a little bit. And that was the big moment for me. That was a big aha moment for me is when I started learning a little bit, being able to take it home, build projects, have a mentor. And then from there, I mean, the rest is history, right? Then I was starting to able to work on bigger tickets, started doing leak code, started getting new job offers, new job opportunities. And that was my way on how I broke into software development. It's not the whole, I graduated with a computer science degree. I was hustling leak code for hours and hours. And uh, I applied to 800, you know, companies and only got an interview with 10 of them. And out of that 10, I only got one offer. That's not my story. Story. My story was I applied to one company, got it as a business analyst, learned software development on the side while working in tech, surrounded by tech individuals. And that would be my story to so many people who want to get into tech. I would say find a new job in tech, find a different area. And from there, build up your software development. That could be even testing. That could be business analysts like I did. That could be a project manager. There are so many different avenues to get into tech, and it doesn't always need to be sending out 1000 applications grinding lead code. So uh, hope this helps. Hope this maybe opens up some doors for you if you're looking to break into tech this year. And I'll see you in the next video.